Joining me now is Terry Lynch, the CEO of Power & Nickel. Great to see you again, Terry. Uh, great to be here, Mark. How are you doing today? I'm very well. Now, uh, the last time we spoke, you talked about a massive blockbuster hole that you discovered at your NISC project in Quebec, uh, full of uh, platinum group mineralization. So uh, can you, you tell us, um, in terms of uh, expectations, what this does for the project? It raises a lot of expectations, really. I mean, that's uh, that hole we've come to understand. It's like a top, top five, top six PGM hole in all the world in the last two years. So, pretty spectacular wildcat hole, I would say, when we're really looking for nickel. So, uh, what that does is it, it was five kilometers away from our major ore body, the uh, the one we've been advancing all this winter, and uh, the fact that that that, that the system you know, it extends that far and is charged to that degree with such a high a concentrate is uh, very exciting. Typically, you see that stuff historically. We've seen that stuff in, you know, Voices Bay and Norilsk and some of the really big monster uh, nickel PGM deposits in the world. So uh, I'm not saying we're them, but I mean, it's certainly exciting to think that that's definitely one of the one of the possibilities. And certainly, you know, the fact that it was uh, on strike and you know, we, we've actually done subsequent to, uh, you know, drilling that we we flew an airborne EM over that area and we've gotten preliminary results back on that. And it looks like there's obviously lots of uh, lit sectors uh, along the way. So uh, it's, uh, you know, I think it, it shows us that we've really just scratched the surface at uh, at NISC and this is going to be a truly uh, exceptional uh, discovery. Right. Now, you've told us that uh, the company is planning to come out with an updated 43101 sometime in Q3, and you've estimated that the resource may expand to as many as uh, 8 to 10 million tons, which would make you commercial. So are you getting increasingly confident that you're you're sitting on what you like to call a, a river of nickel? Yes. You know, I mean, we you know, the, the uh, drill bit never lies. Right. I mean, so we've, we've had con very consistent solid uh, assay results to spectacular assay results from the time we started to announce on this project. And uh, we keep on, you know, uh, obviously you never hit hundred percent of your drill holes, nor would you want to, because you wouldn't be pushing the envelope enough, you know, because if you think of it visually as a river of nickel, and that's back to what it looks like, uh, you know, you want it to be as wide as possible and as deep as possible. And in our case, cloudy as possible since cloudy is the high grade. But, you know, it'll be what it'll be, right? Mother Nature has already predetermined what that is down there. It's our job to figure it out. So you do that by testing the drill holes. You you put one in the left and then you think, oh, uh, and I can go further left and I can go further right. And, you know, so that's how you sort of, you know, prove up ore body. So we're doing a little bit of this dance and sometimes you move too too much and and miss it. And sometimes you still are in it and then maybe you can go farther, you know. So, so that's the type of process we're into right now on the core ore body, the... Um, the main deposit we call NISC main. Uh, and we think, you know, we our, our math suggests that something in the north of 8 million tons is certainly in the realm of the possible there. And and we expect to get that out complete with a new metallurgical study. And sometime in Q3, we, 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 we talked to the metallurgical guys and they're thinking end of August or so. So that would mean the 43101 in, 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 uh, in, in September sometime. So that's just around the corner, really, when you think of us, it's, it's almost June now. So so very close that that's going to come. And then, you know, we, we already did some testing, you know, step outs, you know, east and west of that. And then, of course, this giant step out, uh, which, you know, are all very indicative of other pods. Typically, nickel sulfide mines, every single one in the history of the world has always been multiple pod. So, uh, so basically what that means is when Mother Earth, you know, you know, brings the, uh, you know, nickel or to the surface or to the an area where it can be discovered, she deposits typically a number of deposits. And, and so we found one, we'd expect to find several more, and it now looks like it could be as much as a five or six kilometer strike length of ore deposits, which could be really epic. So uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty stoked about what we're seeing right now uh, with the drill bit. That's great. Now, Terry, you've said before, you've never really explored for nickel, but we know you've explored for years other types of metal. So uh, how is it similar? How is it different? And, and what are you learning? You know, I, I think the science is a lot uh, easier to use uh, with base metals and, uh, and nickel in particular than it is, say, for precious metals, in my experience. Uh, the um, 
bottom line, you know, for example, we, we, we did the airborne EM. Well, the airborne EM lights up like a Christmas tree over magnetic uh, anomalies. So the mass of sulfides are magnetic. So, of course, if you get, you know, we, we obviously fly it over our existing deposit, we see what that looks like, and we sort of see what's adjacent to it and the coloring. I mean, that's highly indicative. So so I find this, the, the tool set, if you would, uh, for exploring for base metals is just a little bit more certain because of the size of the ore bodies and, 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 their, and their magnetic configuration vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, you know, precious metals, which is, I mean, oftentimes you can't even tell you've got gold that's not visible. You know, you, know, you, you occasionally you get lucky in visible gold, but often, like, I mean, like the really giant deposits in Nevada, they couldn't see it, you know, so, so you, you have to assay it. So the good news is when you're drilling with the massive sulfides, you know, if you've had a good drill hole, you know, you basically intersect it and, you know, you can see the pencil light and you can see, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the charge that's in there and, and you generally know how big the intersection is. Now you don't know exactly the, the final grade or whatever, but you have a pretty good feel of it's historically going to be in the, in that realm of things. So, so I find it's, it's uh, in my mind in a, uh, uh, a more exciting form of exploration because you actually know it when you're hitting it. And, and that gives you some, you know, I think flexibility on the ground to do some things that you might otherwise not be able to do until the next iteration, the next drill program. So, uh, yeah, it, it, I got to say, I've never explored for nickel before, but, uh, and of course we've been in, hey, listen, enormously lucky, uh, you know, even, and, and enormous, you know, and like, I'm not a scientist, so my scientific team has done a bang up job, both modeling the deposit and being diligent on the surface. Like they spotted that oak crop you know, five kilometers away and they had the, you know, a hot spot to convince me to drill it and, you know, on this winter target and bang, oh, we hit, you know, so, so great, you know, great science, you know, from our team, you know, the GeoVector team, uh, Adam Finley and Eric Herbert and Joe Campbell and those guys, they, they really did a great job of that. So, you know, it's, it, you know, the team has made a really significant contribution to our exploration success. And we think it's uh, just the tip of the iceberg. I want to get back to something we talked about last time. One of the technologies you're using, ambient noise tomography. It just sounds so fascinating. And, and Elon Musk is tied into this somehow. Could, could you uh, just, again, briefly explain what yeah, you're sure. doing and, and how unique it is? And, uh, and are, are other companies using this? Or is it sort of uh, unique to Power Nickel to a degree? No, so we uh, we don't try and be pioneers. Pioneers get shot with arrows <laughs> and often die in in, in, in in, um, in unmarked graves, so we don't want to be that guy. But we basically, you know, obviously, I, I follow all the the top tier nickel companies because just to stay abreast of the market and the industry and what's cutting edge out there, as I think most executives would do. And I noticed that uh, Talon Metals, who I would say, if you're a, a junior nickel explorer, that's sort of who you want to be when you grow up, because that's you know I would say that you know the top uh, junior in the market today, they're uh, close to 450 or 500 million that deposit value. Um, you know, talent's 60 percent of that. So they've done very a great job of, of uh, you know, following up this what they call the Tamarack discovery in, in the Michigan, uh, Minnesota area. And uh, amongst the tactics uh, that they're using now to advance that and, and indeed find more nickel is this uh, ambient noise tomography. So when they announced that deal and I looked at the technology and saw the explanation, whatever, uh, you know, I, I phoned up the company Fleet Space Technologies out of uh, Melbourne in, in Australia. And uh, they sent me some white papers. I read it, looked interesting to me, but I thought, listen, I'd be easy to fool because I'm not a scientist. It did make sense to me. It's basically uh, sound mapping. It's it, it, That's what they do. They send, uh, they, they have these little geodes they put on the ground and they're all wirelessly linked to each other. And then they're uplinked to the satellite. This is where Elon Musk came in. He put the satellites up for these guys. And he, from my understanding, was the guy who brought the technology to Talon Metals when he, uh, I suspect, when he was negotiating and doing the offtake agreement with Talon, he probably brought that forward as, hey, this may be another way for you to advance your exploration. So um, so what happened uh, is we, we basically, you know, I looked at it and I thought it made sense. So I brought it to my technical team at GeoVector, and, and uh, Ken Williamson at 3DGO, who was the initial modeler of the thing, did a great job. And uh, basically, um, I said, guys, look, I, I've seen this technology. I'm not a scientist. I've read up all the literature. Seems to make sense to me. I think it could help us at NISC. I'm a big believer in science. I'd rather measure twice and cut once. But I said, you guys got to decide. You're, you're the science team. I don't make 
I, I, I raise the money for you guys, but I don't make the final call on, on where we drill or, or why we drill. That's all to me, uh, you know, uh, for you guys to advise and we'll, we'll allocate the capital as we, you know, uh, re recommend. So they were actually quite skeptical, honestly, initially. Uh, and I guess that's par for the course in, in, this, in this space. But they eventually got into it. And after about three sessions with Fleet, they were, uh, they were impressed. They said, hey, look, I think this can be really helpful. So, you know, at the end of the day, what we expect to have happen is, is this uh, ambient noise tomography will, uh, will lay it out over first our core area, like the area that we've already got the discovery holes and many of them. And, and so, for example, we had one hole where we had 40 meters of, you know, almost 1.6% nickel EQ, which would be like a, a top five hole of nickel anywhere in the world last year. And so that particular hole is at a, a very specific spot in the earth we know exactly where it's at you know from x y and z axis and we know uh, you know you know where it is within the earth core so it's got a definitive effectively address so that address will map up with a specific sound map so what happens is when they when they put this pulse down 2000 meters and it comes back as a sound map one of those maps will correlate to that mass of sulfide so that's going to give us a signature of what this mass of sulfide looks like on a sound map so theoretically, we'll be looking for similar signatures across uh, our land package. So we'll be looking, you know, you know, laterally, of course, across the, the next, you know, six kilometers of the ultramafic uh, sequence. And then we'll also be looking vertically because often uh, rivers of nickel are stacked. So there'll be one up top and there may be another one intermediate, another one deeper. So, you know, uh, you know, it's sort of incumbent upon us to try and identify where the best possible sources of targets are. And so, you know, this will be a great way to sort of call that down. And then, you know, we'll be, you know, using the airborne EM and the downhole EM and the IP and the gravity on the, the natural conventional scientific tools to further, you know, refine the techniques and effectively look for concentric circles where all these things point to, yeah, this would be a good target. And so obviously that's where we'll drill. So the idea is drilling is expensive uh, and you, you, you don't want to do it willy nilly. You want to, you know, do as much as you can brain power wise to uh, you know, really get the best intelligence you can and then then go and execute. And then obviously we'll iterate. And as we as we learn in drilling, that can you know go back into the feedback loop of, of the data we'll have. And then we can get better at uh, refining our techniques going forward. So we think it'll, it'll shave really, a, you know, a considerable amount of exploration time by doing it this way and should save us a lot of money in the long term and hopefully get us to a uh, massive pod discovery sooner than uh, than would otherwise be possible. All right, very interesting. And as we wrap things up here, uh, Terry, in terms of catalysts, uh, you've got the updated uh, mineral resource estimate coming. I believe you have some more assay results to come. So uh, what can we expect and what can investors expect the next uh, few months or so? Yeah, so it's going to be pretty action packed. You know, so the next uh, thing we'll have, is there'll be another round of assays. We think that'll be come out next week, according to the schedule. And then probably another a month from that will be the last set of assays for the winter program and uh in the interim uh after this round of assays there'll be a uh will always be a, a, a launching this fleet uh technology that'll start to uh, be uh distributed and input and we'll start to get images and data from that within a week of being on site it's really remarkable that way and then uh, we will expect to have the airborne um, survey out sometime in the next uh, three or four weeks which will be quite illuminating given that the mass of sulfides are so highly magnetic and should show up. And we know we've seen some preliminary things like our core ore body showed up as a light red. Purple is the color you're looking for. And there's a few purple spots on the map. So we're super stoked about those. So uh, so that'll come out. And then, uh, you know, we're, we're working on, you know, I would say there's a lot of industry interest in, in, in our uh, discovery. And uh, we're not getting the love we, we should be getting in the stock market, but hopefully that's why we're doing programs like this so people can see and get excited because industry sure likes what we got. And, and uh, there's probably, you know, uh, you know, one of the planks we have in our, uh, our to-do list or action plan for NIST next year is we talk about either doing a PEA or better in the next uh, 12 months. And, and, and people say, well, what do you mean by or better? Well, or better could be a feasibility study. So we've been approached by, um, you know, people to significant, you know, industry players, multi-billion dollar private companies that believe this is going to be a mine and are prepared to uh, step up in finance and pay for a feasibility study. So you don't have to plot along and do a PEA and a pre-fees. 
you can if you feel there's a mine there. And if somebody's prepared to bankroll you on that and provide the infrastructure to make that happen, uh, you can move forward with that. So uh, it's pretty interesting that that's possible at this day and age. And, and we, you know, that could happen as soon as, uh, you know, between now and June, end of June. So uh, it's going to be an exciting time to be uh, watching PNPN and even better to be owning it. Right. Sounds like you have some options there, possibility of uh, fast tracking the project. Thanks for the update, uh, Terry. We'll be following as always. Good talking to you, Mark. Have a great day. You too. Terry Lynch, CEO of Power Nickel.